This is Eric Alvarez. One quick note before we begin. This episode is available in Spanish. You are listening to the English version, which means I'm going to try to say soccer instead of football. Para escucharlo en español, busca el podcast Mi Mundialista Favorito. Mark Anthony Kay was raised by a single mom with a little help from a Nokia flip phone. She'd always be constantly like be checking up on me, like calling me and stuff because I was like 10 or 11, you know, and I'm taking TTC by myself. TTC, as in Toronto's public transit system, that phone was the eyes and ears for Mark Anthony's mom as he traversed the Canadian city alone, going from school to soccer practice to games and back again. Before the Nokia flip phone, though, the Canadian soccer star had a Firefly phone. It was like this blue phone that only had like three buttons and you had to program the numbers in. It was early 2000s then, and that's what it was like. Mark Anthony would have the phone glued to his ear as he went stop by stop doing his homework his mom doling out questions on the other end of the line. So I would say, okay, did you get on the bus okay? Was everything okay? Did you pay? Did you get a seat? You know, what's happening right now? Mark Anthony and his mom had to get creative if he wanted to pursue his passion for soccer seriously. Novelet K, a single mother in Canada's most expensive city, was working two jobs to support three kids, including twins, five years younger than Mark Anthony. I remember asking my mom, like, hey, like the fees are due, like, you know, next week, like we need to write them a check. And she was like, like, honestly told me, she's like, she doesn't have that money. But Mark Anthony and his mom always found a way. Today, the 27 year old is back in his hometown as a star midfielder for Toronto FC and poised to represent Canada in what will be the country's first time in the men's World Cup in 36 years. That fit is immensely meaningful to Mark Anthony. But there is another goal that extends far beyond any title soccer could give him. I'm LX News host Eric Alvarez, and I'm joined by Juan Pablo Angel, a Colombian goal scoring machine. Thank you, Eric. This is my new favorite footballista, where we introduce you to some of football's brightest stars and the causes they're fighting for off the pitch. In 1996, there were about 900,000 women raising children alone in Canada. Novelet Kay, an immigrant from Jamaica, was one of those women when Mark Anthony was born two years earlier. It wasn't easy raising him as a single mom, not because of him, because he's a wonderful, lovable child. Everybody says, Novelet, we have no idea how you did all that all by yourself, but I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm determined. So is Mark Anthony. He's a very determined boy. Determined and helpful. Novalette realized that when she gave birth to Mark Anthony's brothers, twins born prematurely when Mark Anthony was five years old. She was now raising three kids by herself. He pitched in and he did his part. I would let him sit down and then I would put one on one side and one on the other side so that he sort of hold them sort of thing. He loved helping people, even strangers. Even if somebody was crying, he would go over to make sure that they were okay and, you know, give a little hug and stuff like that. He was good with his brothers. He was really good with his brothers as well. To raise three kids alone, Novelet knew she had to increase her income. So she decided to pursue a master's in childhood education at York University in Toronto. But she still had to make money while she studied. So I used to be a cashier and a caterer. So I used to cater for the Marriott when they have their big events in the university. Her other job was at Tim Hortons making coffee. Wake up, parent, study, work, work again, pick up kids from school, study, bathe the kids, help them do homework, take finals, 
work, and work again. Novelet's days went something like that. Sometimes my girlfriend used to trade off, like I used to watch her children and she would drop Mark Anthony to daycare if I was starting an early shift and if I had an early class or something. It wasn't until I started to understand how the world worked um, until I realized that, you know, my mom was dealing with some, some odds against her, but she did a really good job to make us not realize that. Novelette's main goal was to make sure Mark Anthony had an easy childhood. She didn't sleep so he could. She didn't pursue anything outside of school so that he could. She dreamed smaller so he could dream bigger. My childhood was really good. But as his dreams got bigger, so did the obstacles. Mark Anthony started playing soccer when he was nine years old. It started off as an extracurricular with weekly practices and games on weekends, but nothing too demanding. Difficult without a car, but not impossible. I never had a car. I never, I never drove. And then when the parents saw me coming off the bus or whatever the case may be, I used to do it with the twin strollers as well. And Mark Anthony holding on to the stroller. The family made it work. But as Mark Anthony's passion for soccer grew, so did his talent. And as his talent on the field increased, so did the demands of his league. By the age of nine, he was riding Toronto's network of public buses alone, using one hand to do homework and the other to hold a phone with his mom on the other end of the line. She would always like make sure I got on the right bus. As the demand of his youth soccer league increased, so did the fees. When Mark Anthony was 14, Novelet simply didn't have the money to register her son for the season. But Mark Anthony wouldn't take no for an answer. We never gave up because that was, that was his dream. That's what he wanted to do. So Mark Anthony decided to get a job. I wrote my resume on a piece of line paper. So I brought like my resume into like this local drugstore and like gave it to the manager. The manager was impressed by his penmanship, but mostly because he was Novelet K's son, a woman who was well known in the community. Mark Anthony was hired as a stock boy and cashier. I got a job and I was able to pay for my soccer that year, which was really cool. Um, but again, Stepping into the workforce made me understand how much sacrifice my mom had to make to make sure me and my brothers had the, the opportunities we did. Within a year, he was playing with the Ajax Soccer Club in Canada. He enrolled at York University in 2012, where he scored 18 goals, leaving to join TFC Academy, a breeding ground for future Major League Soccer players. The time was worth it. After a year with TFC, he found himself living in the U.S spending two years with the Louisville City FC in the second tier United Soccer League, and then getting transferred to his first major league soccer team, LAFC, where he spends four seasons as a midfielder before going to the Colorado Rapids in 2021. Mark Anthony Kay's accomplishments are too many to count, but you can draw a direct line between them and his mom. I think just her relentlessness to continue to find work, um, and make sure there was food on the table and we had clothes is, is definitely the biggest sacrifice she made because she had to do it by herself for three boys. Sacrifices, Mark Anthony wants to make sure we're not in vain. And that's also one of the big reasons why I want to continue to be successful and have resources so that I can give her those experiences still um, that she wanted and, and you know gave up for us. Mark Anthony is paying back his mom for all of her sacrifices in a few ways. I take care of a lot of the bills back home in Toronto for, for my mom and my brothers and help give her money for groceries and stuff. But another way is far more meaningful, according to Novelette. I started crying. I, I was crying right away. I said, oh my gosh, this is, this is so amazing. In 2021, Mark Anthony was looking for a way to give back. The then 23-year-old was making strides with the Colorado Rapids, but he wanted a way to show his appreciation for single mothers in the United States. And I felt like starting with a single mother's charity was definitely the right way to go about it. And it was really authentic to me. We wanted to learn more about the issues single mothers face. For that, we went to an unassuming building complex in Southern California. 
Oh, hi, Mark. How are you? That's Yorlini Sapp, the executive director of Single Mothers Outreach, a nonprofit in Santa Clarita, California, that provides mental and financial support for single parents in the area. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yorlini is congratulating Mark Anthony for being traded from the Colorado Rapids to his new team, Toronto FC, back in July of 2022. It's been... Uh... A crazy couple of days, but uh, it's nice to be home. So, yeah, I'm excited. Single Mothers Outreach is the organization Mark Anthony partnered with when he was with the Colorado Rapids. I'm excited to announce to you guys that I'm doing a sweepstakes giveaway where I'll be donating all the proceeds to Single Mothers Outreach. Single Mothers Outreach is a great charity that helps single He, together with the company Engage, organized a sweepstakes and raised $2,000 for the nonprofit. The organization helps more than 400 single parents a year with everything from hotel vouchers for those experiencing homelessness to therapy, job placement, and leadership training workshops like this one. And so that's my physical expression of this quality that I want to embody. The word that comes up in making that happen is passion, finding the passion back in my life because of my situation that basically got sucked out of me. Okay. The woman you're hearing is talking to a professional executive coach hired by the nonprofit. This is a, a professional executive coach, and uh, that definitely they, they will not have access to if they will have to pay it. It's, we're talking about at least $100 an hour, and most of the moms won't be able to afford that. So we provide all those classes for free. Same thing with therapy. Single Mothers Outreach is steadfast in the holistic support they provide. This is not just about just giving things and helping. It's about moving people forward in life. The reason for that is the statistics. These stats that Yorlini can recite from memory. In America, there is about 13 million single parents, which brings about 21 million children raised by, sil by single parents. And the difference of the outcomes of a kid raised in a two-parent family and a kid raised in a single uh, parent household is completely different. Here's what she means by that. When it comes to children of single parents. About 49% of single parents in the United States are at poverty level. That's compared to 25% for children in two-parent households. That last statistic is one Yorlini is hung up on. The financial challenges facing single parents can leave them in a vicious cycle. And it has a lot to do with one thing even two-parent households can barely get a grip on, child care. It's a cycle. It's so hard to break it because if they go to work to live in a different stage, 53% of their salary goes to child care. Let me tell you a tale of two countries. In Denmark, the government pays for about $12,000 in child care per child a year, in line with Iceland, Sweden, Norway, and France. The United States spends closer to $500 per child, putting it at the bottom of developed nations that are part of the OECD, an organization of mostly high-income member countries. Child care could be from $100 a day to at least $60 an hour. And parents are on the hook for all of it in the United States, unlike Denmark, where parents pay no more than 25% of the cost. But there have been pushes to make things easier for parents on this side of the world, as some US politicians aim to pitch childcare as an essential pillar of society, touting it as an economic booster as it frees up parents eager to work. The country's first woman finance minister promises to do what no federal government could in half a century. High quality early learning and child care for an average of $10 a day. Facing some of the highest child care costs in the world, Canada voted to lower the cost of child care from the average of $73 a day to $10 a day in places like Toronto. For Novalette, full cost daycare was not an option so she would trade babysitting duties with other single moms. When Novalette enrolled at York University, the school offered daycare for students. Getting child support from Mark Anthony's dad helped too. But obviously not everyone has access to a master's program that offers child care, and more than 70% of single moms in the U.S. don't get any child support. That's where government aid can really help. 
In the United States, the child tax credit helped families with monthly payments of up to $250 to $300 per child during the pandemic. But that program expired in January. That's help Single Mothers Outreach says any parent could use, but especially single parents. They are the poorest of the poorest in this country. But there are other ways to help outside of government resources. The first thing that you need to do is learn about the struggles that single moms have. Hopefully, this podcast help you with that part. That's the first thing. The second thing people can do is talk to single parents in their community. We ask a couple of people who've benefited from single mothers outreach for what the most pressing needs for single parents are. I, I knew I was going to be alone. Here's Diana Moreno, a single mother and college student. I needed empowerment. That's all I was looking for. I wasn't looking for a handout. I just needed mental support, emotional support, and to understand my own process. Here's Nicole. Just reach out to people. Just say, how can you help a single mother? Help us with daycare. Daycare is like the most critical for single mothers. I mean, I was paying a lot. And just that alone could have, you know, just that help alone could be just amazing. Just having a place for them to come bring their kids to when that mother has to work two jobs or when that mother has to go to school late at night, those night classes. And here's what Mark Anthony Kay's mom had to say. It's a good thing if people reaches out to single mothers. Some of us don't ask for the help that we need. Mark Anthony Kay dreams of a world where single parents feel more seen and raising a child is in a mental game of financial sudoku. Something that you can give for free is emotional support. And single parents, they go through a lot. They have to juggle a lot that, you know, it was destined that, you know, parents was a two person job, um, parenting a family and kids. And imagine taking all those responsibilities and only putting it on one person. I think the support of their community, their close friends, um, teachers, any, anyone who has a direct connection to the kids or the parent, I think showing them support would, would, would give them that maybe give them a little bit of the strength they need to get through that day. That's why Mark Anthony Kay is not done giving back. I was looking forward to the future on what I wanted my sort of legacy to be when I'm, you know, done soccer and stepping into the business world and I have kids and grandkids and, you know, you're sitting on that chair like in your house and you have this big family tree underneath you and you're like, you know, what, what is something that you're going to be really proud of that you did? on the next episode of my new favorite Futbolista. This US defender is tired of hearing LGBTQ slurs on the soccer pitch. He is determined to make the sport more inclusive. You know, in any sport really, uh, especially men's sport, there's such a kind of macho, tough guy, you know, act that people have to put on. And, you know, I think when, if you somehow associate yourself with LGBTQ, it kind of makes you not look like a macho, tough guy. And that's kind of a, a stereotype that needs to get washed away. Get to know DeAndre Yetlin on the next episode of my new favorite Futbolista. Thank you for listening to my new favorite Futbolista. There will be over 500 players at the World Cup, so we have more inspiring stories to tell. Go back to the My New Favorite Futbolista feed right now to hear previous episodes and make sure to subscribe to get future episodes automatically downloaded to your device. This episode of My New Favorite Futbolista was produced by LX News and Telemundo. Juan Pablo Angel and I were your hosts. Fernando Hurtado wrote this episode and James Jeffrey edited it. Fernando Hurtado and Seth Rubenroyd were the supervising producers. Matthew Glasser served as managing editor. Jeremy Berg and Matt Goldberg served as executive producers. Tony Pierce was the motion graphics designer with support from Aaron Pinnell. Justin Covington, Brad Fossler, James Jeffrey, Quatzin Gutierrez, and Sanjesh Singh were the production crew. Stephen Dawson was the media manager and quality control editor. 